the effects of a repeated reading intervention on oral reading fluency in third grade students. Let's now explore the background of reading and the importance of narrowing the third grade reading gap. Learning how to read by third grade is a critical milestone. Research demonstrates that students not reading proficiently by the end of third grade are four times more likely not to finish high school. Third grade marks an important turning point when the focus shifts from learning to read to reading to learn. During this transition, students spend less time learning new reading skills and are instead learning new content and concepts that reading conveys. Several states, including South Carolina, have enacted legislation that requires students not reading proficiently by the end of third grade to be retained. Retention has become a popular strategy for states and districts looking to improve literacy skills and prevent struggling readers from moving on. Studies of grade retention have shown some positive effects in the short term, but negative in the long term, including increased risks for dropping out of high school. Not only does retention negatively impact students' long-term achievement, it is costly for school districts with a national average of $11,000 per student. The objective for this current research project is to determine the effects of a repeated reading intervention on the total number of words read in a weekly progress monitoring on oral reading fluency probes. Now let's take a look at the methods. As the researcher, I met with the principal before the school year began and explained the purpose of the study. She then made suggestions of which grade levels would be good candidates for this study. The participants ranged in age from eight to nine years old. Target students were chosen from each third grade classroom based on an examination of the school assessment data. We then selected students on the basis of the results of screening for at-risk markers in reading on the Star Re Renaissance Reading Assessment. At this current school, there are only about 24% of students who are meeting or exceeding grade level standards in reading. About 44% of the students are not meeting grade level standards. Materials for this research study included reading probes that were pulled from the HELPS curriculum, Dibble's oral reading fluency probes, which were used for progress monitoring, and a timer that was used to notify the researcher of the time limit. A multiple baseline across participants design was used to evaluate the effects of repeated reading sessions on the oral reading fluency of each student. The advantage of using this design is that it does not require withdrawal of treatment and can be used for more than one student needing the same intervention. When the effects of the independent variable cannot be withdrawn or reversed, this type of research design is beneficial. Students were chosen to participate based on the principal's recommendations. Parental permission was then sent home to each student who scored below the 25th percentile, but not below the 10th percentile, on their Star Renaissance reading assessment. During the baseline condition, students were given three third grade level reading passages. Their performance was measured by having the student read aloud for one minute. The median score was then used. During the intervention phase, the students met during their small group reading time, three days per week for 30 minutes. The repeated reading intervention consisted of having the students read the same text three times each session. The interventionist read the same text three times, exposing the students to one text six times. Modeling for the lower level reader was incorporated by having the interventionist read the passage first. Error correction was incorporated into this condition, as well as a summarization component. Error correction consisted of each student 
reviewing missed words with the interventionist after their second read. Summarization consisted of students providing the interventionist with a summarization of the text after the final read. Now let's review the results. The question of what are the effects of a repeated reading intervention on the total number of words read in weekly progress monitoring on oral reading fluency in third grade students was posed at the beginning of this research. With the introduction of the repeated reading intervention, there was an increase in oral reading fluency rates for all students with an increase from a baseline average of 51.48 correct words per minute to an intervention mean of 70.2 correct words per minute. Effect size estimates indicated that the intervention had a moderate to large effect size on oral reading fluency with a mean effect size of 0.73. Although the intervention was highly effective, only four of the students were able to meet their spring benchmark goal of 94 to 117 correct words per minute. Now we will have a discussion on implications for the field, limitations of this study, and future research. Although reading fluently is not the sole purpose of reading, higher order reading and comprehension cannot be developed without a strong foundation of accurate and efficient word recognition. Repeated reading interventions help in building this foundation, and it really helped the students in this study. All students showed an increase in oral reading rate with repeated readings compared to the baseline condition, and four students were able to meet spring benchmark assessment goals. Repeated readings promote reading fluency rates among struggling readers, and this type of intervention is one that teachers can easily implement with relative ease. So, what does this mean for the field? There is a general consensus that to prevent reading failure, schools must intervene as early as possible with explicit, systematic, and intensive reading instruction. Research has supported the use of repeated readings as an effective instruction for building oral reading ability among struggling readers. However, there are several implications for teachers as they use repeated readings in their classroom. Many schools allocate time specifically for reading, most commonly silent sustained reading time. While silent reading allows students to form a habit and love for reading, if the goal is to improve students' oral reading, then more time for overt reading activities are needed. Teachers can allocate 10 to 20 minutes for repeated readings. Repeated readings can be implemented with a variety of grouping formats in the classroom. Depending on the student need, the teacher can divide the class into two or more groups. Research has also suggested that providing students with a model of fluent reading before independent practice is a strategy that builds fluency. Students can read along silently while a more advanced reader models or when the reading content is the same across students the teacher can model fluent reading before repeated readings. With varying levels and limited teacher resources, audio tape and computer generated models can be a solution. This study was designed to control variables in order to effectively answer the primary research question. It was implemented, however, in a practical school context with resulting limitations. Because of the pandemic, many students were participating in a virtual instruction model. With this came technology issues, which may have contributed to the success of each student. Another limitation to this study was absenteeism, which influenced the overall total time and in intervention. The sample size for this study was very small. Future research should consider larger sample sizes to get a better representation of the students in their student body population. This study was designed to control variables in order to effectively answer the primary research question. It was implemented, however, in a practical school context with resulting limitations. Because of the pandemic, 
many students were participating in a virtual instruction model. And with this came technology issues, which may have contributed to the success of each student. Another limitation to this study was absenteeism, which influenced the overall total time in intervention. The sample size for this study was relatively small. Future research should consider larger sample sizes to get a better representation of the students in their student body population. In the current study, students were intentionally selected because they demonstrated significant reading difficulties, but not diagnosed with any disabilities. I think it is important to note that findings from this study may not generalize to higher performing students or lower performing students with reading difficulties or disabilities. It is possible that some other type of fluency intervention, perhaps at a more intense level or the addition of explicit word level instruction would be more effective. In the future, more research on this topic is warranted, including replication of interventions with different populations. For example, special education and high school students and under different conditions with larger sample sizes.